You're in course two of this MOOC, you have learned about the pitfalls of measurement of kidney function. However, it's essential to draw blood from older patients with chronic kidney disease on a regular basis. We will now give you insight about the timing of laboratory monitoring, as well as the single parameters that need to be taken into consideration when caring for older people with chronic kidney disease. Chronic care management of older patients with chronic kidney disease is built on three huge columns. The first one is clinical history taking, to know about the individual targets and goals of your patients. Secondly, clinical evaluation, such as checking for blood pressure, edema, voiding, and urine volume is important to know about the status of your patient. Finally, Regular laboratory monitoring is essential in the chronic care management. You have learned a lot about anemia and also how to determine kidney function from serum and urine. In this course, we will focus on two important major issues when dealing with older patients in a chronic care management. The first one is the balance between sodium and water. And the second one is the balance between acids and bases. Why is it important to maintain a balance between sodium and water? Well, generally, in human bodies, the fluid is divided into two huge departments, the intracellular volume and the extracellular vol volume. The extracellular volume is comprised of the intravascular fluid together with the interstitial fluid. It's especially important to maintain a balance for the extracellular volume as it regulates the human blood pressure. Furthermore, it's important to know that the sodium concentration in extracellular volume highly determines the total body volume and therefore the general hemostasis of the human body. What are the clinical signs and symptoms if the balance of sodium is disturbed? In case of low so sodium levels, such as hyponatremia, you may find following clinical signs. Headache, confusion and dizziness, falls, vomiting, and in severe cases, cramps and coma. In case of hypernatremia, people get thirsty and get fever. They get confused and dizzy, and in severe stages, get cramps and coma. Following diseases are often associated with an imbalance of sodium metabolism. Cardiac insufficiency, hepatic insufficiency, hypovolemia, or the drug treatment with diuretics or psychotropic medications. It's therefore important to notice that during every visit of your patient, you have to take a careful clinical history and also consider the clinical presentation of your patient with chronic kidney disease. What to do when? In case of hypovolemia, we usually add volume and fluid together with sodium. In case of hypervolemia, we restrict sodium and volume uptake and we use to prescribe diuretics. In case of hyponatremia, we restrict fluid but not in those patients who present clinically with hypovolemia. In case of hypernatremia, we add fluid, but please take care for the clinical presentation and that your patients are not hypervolemic. The second important system we, we are presenting in this course is the acid-base balance. Acids are substances that are donors of hydrogen ions and bases are targets for hydrogen ion uptake. Acids are usually produced in metabolism of carbohydrates, fat, and protein cleavage in the metabolism. Bases are usually taken up via food, enriched in fruits and vegetables. The body has two options to regulate the balance between acids and bases. Either carbon dioxide is released via the lungs, or hydrogen ions are released via the kidneys to keep the balance between acids and bases. 
75% of the buffering is done by this system. The remaining 25% are done by hemoglobin, floating proteins, or the phosphate metabolism. Well, why is it so important to have an eye on the acid-base metabolism? We, we nowadays know that the bicarbonate levels in human bodies closely correlate to mortality, especially in older people with chronic kidney disease. Therefore, recommendations exist that every patient with chronic kidney disease in stage 3 and more should have a check for the acidosis every six months during routine chronic care management. In case the bi serum bicarbonate level is lower than 22 millimole per liter, it's recommended to start a buffering and to raise serum bicarbonate to a target level of 23 to 27 millimole per liter. Add protein additionally. In older patients with chronic kidney disease, in an amount of 0.8 grams to 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight per day. Enrich the food of your patients with fruits and vegetables to ensure bicarbonate uptake. 